Here are the keys to going viral. I want to have some context. Do not go into the mindset with every tweet of going viral because if you do, it's just not going to work for you. Going viral is intention, timing, luck, and a lot of the time you can't even really predict it. What you can do, and this is what you do control, this is what I'm going to teach you, is you can understand the things that make tweets go viral. So it increases the probability that your tweet will go viral. And that's top secret information right there. Do the stuff that increases the chances of getting viral without expecting it to go viral. And it most likely will at some point. Here is how you tweet to grow. Tips. You need to use attention-grabbing words, use proper spacing, slightly controversial opinions to provoke commenting. What do I mean when I say use attention-grabbing words? Let's talk about it. Making money in X days in your 20s, 10K per month, hard pill to swallow, life hack, passive income. Think about the words that your specific market use on a day-to-day -day basis. Every market is kind of different. They have some words that they share. So you need to know the specific market you're creating content for because you're not just creating content for everybody. You're creating content for a specific group of individuals, aka market. Let me give you an example. Making $1,000 in five days, that is a very captivating hook that's going to make you want to continue reading because it's going to capture your attention. In your 20s, blah, 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 blah. Or making $100,000 in your 20s, $10,000 per month. That is something everybody dreams of. By the way, it's not actually that much money. It's impressive. It's awesome if you do hit 10K when you do. But 10K a month is not just some, oh my God, I'm rich. It's not. I spend more than that just on regular lifestyle stuff. So it's 10K a month is not something like, okay, that's my goal. 10K a month. Because with inflation and everything else, it's going to get to the point where that's really not even that much. It's, you could argue is not really that much now. But the caveat to that is hitting 10K a month is a very good achievement for you. So still make that your initial goal. Hard pill to swallow. Something like that is like, hmm, hard pill to swallow. Another one would be like dark truths unpopular opinions. Look at what your market within Twitter is saying like in their tweets that go viral or get good engagement. So see what's working, tweak it for you. Then use proper spacing. When you're using proper spacing, I've seen so many people they'll write literally just a block of text. Nobody's going to read that on Twitter like 99% of the time. So make sure you break it up and you make it as concise as possible. One rule that I use that I've heard a million times from other people, so this is not my original take, is say the same thing with less words. So as concise as you can get it, using proper spacing is going to make people be more engaged with your tweets. And this applies to even emails and blog articles and everything else. And then also slightly controversial opinions. Obviously, do not call out the entire market. I forgot his name, but there was a guy on Twitter like a year ago where he literally called out every living human being and everybody turned on him immediately. He said something along the lines of, if you still work a job in your 20s or by the time you're 25, your parents hate you. Like that is one of the most stupid comments you can make because it literally called out everybody. And so don't say things like that just to piss people off. Use it intentionally. So you can talk about current events, current things that are trending. You can talk about your opinion on certain takes that are going on in the world that are slightly controversial, but don't be an idiot and call out everybody just because you want to be alpha a Twitter alpha and be impressive, but add your actual opinions out there and they can be slightly controversial and that's going to provoke people to start commenting. Example, something that I do to provoke people is I essentially say that if your girlfriend still works a job, she's not the girlfriend you are. And I'll kind of prod and pick at people that allow their girls to go out and work for another dude and call another man the boss. And that type of thing is thought provoking because, man, Dylan's right. Man, I, I need to stop being so lazy. I need to go out here and get paid so I can tell my girl to quit her job. We can travel the world and we can do all these amazing things. So something like that is much better than what that other person did where he literally called out everybody in a very insulting way. So never insult other people, especially your own audience. You're supposed to be building each other up, supporting each other. So keep that in mind. Here are the keys to viral tweets. It needs to be relatable, number one, short and punchy, and then you can also leverage memes. You don't need to leverage memes every time, but you can also leverage memes to increase the probability that the tweet's going to go viral. And specifically, if it's a meme that everybody's engaging with at that current time. So going viral, like I said, is all about the timing and a little bit of luck as well. So see what's already working, what's trending, and boom, come in, add your take, and you might go viral. But you need to be relatable. When somebody reads your tweet, they need to be like, man, it's like he's tweeting to me. And then it also needs to be short and punchy. Like I said, say the same thing with less words. So the more short and punchy you can be, the better. Here's some examples. 
Being private, staying low-key, and not telling everyone everything is self-care. The reason I tweeted that on that specific day, so that was back in December, was everybody and their mom was talking about basically just bragging about everything they're doing. And so I essentially said the complete opposite of what everybody else was saying. And why did I say that? I said that because I knew that there are a ton of other people that didn't really agree with what all these other people were saying. So I said, being private, staying low-key, and not telling everyone everything is self-care. Meaning, go out there and get paid, live your best life, but you don't need to tell everybody everything. And I knew that there was a lot of other people that would agree with that. And I tweeted that. And it also happened to be that I actually believe that. So don't get caught in that trap of just tweeting things to get validation. Tweet things that you actually believe that counter the popular opinion at that time. Here's another tweet, how it happens every time. This was during a certain event that was happening over the past two years. You know exactly what I'm saying. And essentially everybody was turning on this person. Oh, I'm just following orders. My boss told me to. I have to think of my future. He didn't do what they told him. I have to. I have a family to feed. And they were turning on Jesus. Jesus is obviously a very popular figure. Everybody else was pretty pissed off over the past couple of years with certain things that were happening. Obviously not name dropping it, but you know what I'm talking about. So I tweeted that and I got like 6,000 likes because a lot of people were frustrated. A lot of people were angry. So that's why they agreed to that post. So I took a meme in a current event timing and luck. And I tweeted that out and a lot of people engaged with it. And that was actually the second time I tweeted it. The first time it got way more engagement, but this is the one I found. It's got 1,392 retweets, 6,326 likes. And that was all because of one, it was trending. Two, it was a meme that was quite popular at that time. And three, there was a lot of emotion behind that and it was relatable. So put those principles into place whenever you're writing these tweets. The next, Stop. Why are you scrolling mindlessly? Do you have some work to do? What are you putting off? Get back to it. Stop wasting your time. I tweeted that, and I've also used this tweet multiple times every single time it does well. And the reason it does well is people feel as if I'm speaking directly to them. Because at that moment, they are mindlessly scrolling and probably avoiding doing something that they know they need to be doing. So they see that tweet. And they're like, oh, man. Okay, let me retweet. Let me like that. Okay, I'm going to get back into the real world. And so that's why that one tweet has 400 retweets and 2,000 likes. This one, I tweeted this recently because there was a lot of negativity on the timeline. People were basically saying how humans are bad, humans are this, humans are that. And this video is essentially from another Twitter account that I just tweeted that video. As you can see, it was from this account right here. It had like 17 million views. So obviously a lot of people were engaging with it. So I tweeted that, but I added my own take to it. Humans are naturally good. Don't believe the negativity most spew. And essentially it was just a dude that went down in this water to save a dog. And it essentially went viral, not viral, like the meaning of like 50, 100, 200,000 likes, but it got way more engagement than most other tweets do. And I tapped into something that was relatable. Everybody knows that humans are naturally good. They saw a man saving a dog. That's awesome. And then three, I looked at the timing and this video is doing quite well at the time. So I tweeted that video out. I want you to implement that.